It's the Brian Lehrer Show on WNYC. Good morning again, everyone, live from the green space today. And with us now in the green space, in from France to talk about his new book, the French philosopher and public intellectual Bernard-Henri Lévy, who is so well known in France, he is often referred there uh, to there by his initials, BHL. His new book is called The Empire and the Five Kings, America's Abdication and the Fate of the World. Welcome back to WNYC. So nice after speaking to you on uh, a transatlantic phone line several times to have you in person in the green space. Hi. Thank you. And thanks to everybody. This fine crowd. Thank you very much. Fine. Before we get to the second part of the title, America's Abdication, would you start by identifying who you mean by the five kings, which I see you also refer to as five capitals of hate in the world today? Five capital of hate, five capital of undemocratic regimes, five capital of dictators who... Uh, kill their own people and threaten uh, the West. They are Erdogan, the neo-Ottoman sultan in Turkey. They are Xi Jinping, uh, a true imperialist who uh, martyrize and tortures his own people. Uh, you have Putin, who is for me one of the biggest dangers for the planet of today because he's uh, at the head of a zombie state, but he has the wickedness uh, of, uh, of the strong guy he wants to be. Uh, you have the Mullahs of Iran, uh, Khamenei, and you have MBS, the so-called reformer of Saudi Arabia. We know now his real face. I did not have it when I wrote the book, but I sort of guessed it. My book was published before the savage murder of Khashoggi, cut into 14 pieces, as you know, in the consulate of Arabia Saudi in Turkey. But in a way, the portrait of MBS is in the book. I, I, I depicted him as his, as one of these five uh, uh, advocates of hate and murder who prove my friend Frank Fukuyama to be wrong when he said that the history was over. History is resuming with these five kings. And that was 30 years ago when we had the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War, 1989, when philosopher Francis Fukuyama said it's the end of meaningful political conflict in history, but here we are. And you see these five kings or capitals as being united against the values of the Enlightenment that are part of the idea of the West. And just so we don't take these for granted, Bernard, would you say out loud some of the Enlightenment values that you think are most core and most under threat? The relationship between, of equality between women and men, the fact that a woman has the right to show her face, to marry whoever she wants, uh, not to be harassed. Uh, this very principle is under attack in the five countries I designate in this book. The, the right to enter into a religion and to get out of it. The Can right. I just interrupt to say, you know how we tell people to turn off their cell the phones right. before the show ah, starts? Ah, you are the naughty boy. <laughs> Sometimes I am the naughty boy. <laughs> Today it is you, Brian. I told you never to call me here. <laughs> <laughs> that is somebody who is not listening to the show, by the way. Clearly. Somebody who is not li There is still someone in New York who does not listen to the Brian Lehrer show. <laughs> or who, who is boycotting BHL. <laughs> he is wrong because he would know that these human rights, which consist in the freedom to step in a faith and to step out of a faith, which is recognized in all the enlightened countries, does not work. It means, for example, in the countries which are under the spell of radical Islam. In, a way, in other words, we have an alliance of um, five kings who are very different, who have different interests, but who are allied with the simple goal of crushing their own people, of weakening America 
and the West and of promoting another sort of civilization, which is for me as dangerous as the fascism or the Stalinism. We had the age of Stalinism. We had the age of fascism. My book is to underline the fact that we are facing a third dark age, which is the age of the five kings. My guest is Bernard-Henri Lévy, whose new book is The Empire and the Five Kings, America's Abdication and the Fate of the World. So America's abdication, what are we abdicating from? You are abdicating, I say you, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I say that with humility, but I do believe it so strongly and with, with such sorrow. You are abdicating from your creed, from your moxie, and from your values. L listen, yesterday, I was looking at the TV, and I saw your president saying that there is a state in emergency at the Mexican border. Is he insane? <laughs> Is he joking? What, what, what the hell does this mean? You have in America a state of emergency in front of the Chinese. You have a state of emergency in front of Putin, who is inundating America with fake news. And Europe, this is a state of emergency. There is a, an emergency to stop the flood of fake news coming from Russia. You have a state of emergency in front of Erdogan, who is about to kill the last Syrian Democrat who were under your and our protection. And to say that the state of emergency is against a few dreamers dreamers who want to enter America and to embrace the American values, I'm sorry, this is the exact illustration of the thesis of my book, America is losing provisionally, provisionally, its moxie, its brain, and its greatness. When you say moxie, as a big fan of the United States, you use that word, um, many critics would call this moxie over a period of decades imperialism for thinking we have the right to throw our military around as the biggest superpower. And they would call it often hy hypocritical with respect to the values you're laying out for saying we're spreading democracy when really we've supported any dictator practically who will support us through the Cold War and after that end of history, not just Trump. Of course, you supported dictators, and of course, this was very bad. And I remember when I was a young man, the age of some of those who are here, I was demonstrating in the streets of Paris and of Berlin against the Vietnam War, against the napalm uh, sent over the children. of. I know that. But today, let's be serious. What is imperialism today? Who is imperialist? Putin is a true imperialist. Ask to the Ukrainian, ask to the Chechen people whose city uh, has been erased from the surface of the world. Who is imperialist? Iran is imperialist. Ask the Kurds. Ask the three million of Syrians who have been expelled from their country, who have been massacred, tortured. This is imperialism. Turkey is an imperialism. There is a real imperialism today, which is uh, embodied by Erdogan. So, I am a leftist. I am a liberal. I don't, I did not change one iota of my creeds of youth, but I must say that I did not change, but the world has changed. And today, imperialism is embodied in the five capitals. I'm quoting MBS. Mohammed bin Salman is a killer and is an imperialist. When he sends his killers of Al-Qaeda, and today of ISIS all over the world to spread terror, savagery, crime, World Trade, uh, World Trade Center, September 11, Bataclan, and I hope not others coming. What is that? A sort of imperialism of terror. So in the name of the same values today, you have to face these new threats. Audience here in the green space, uh, raise your hand if you want to ask a question of Bernard-Henri Lévy, listeners on the radio. 
You can call in 212-433-WNYC-433-9692. When we continue after a break, um, I'm going to ask you why not all French people feel the way that you do about the United States. Uh, They are wrong. I'm right. (laughs) (laughs) But how can people call you switch off the phone? There is another one, so a secret one. (laughs) Right Right after this. Okay. Do you hear that? That's the incomparable Yitzhak Perlman. I'm Alec Baldwin. Please join us for Here's the Thing Live. We'll talk about music and music education and hear live performances from some of the talented students in the Perlman Music Program. Monday night at NYU's Skirball Center. Tickets at wnyc.org slash events. WNYC is supported by Brooklyn Solar Works, specializing in providing solar power installation in New York City, whose Gowanus showroom is open to the public. More information at brooklynsolarworks.com slash WNYC. The Cy Sims Foundation, since 1985, supporting progress in education, science, and the arts. Information at cysimsfoundation.org. <laughs> Lara on WNYC, live in the green space today, coming up in a few minutes when Bernard-Henri Levy finishes up. Mo Rocco will join us live on the green space stage, who you know from Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me and other things. He's got a new podcast series called Mo Obituaries, so Mo Rocca coming up. Um, Bernard-Henri Levy's new book is The Empire and the Five Kings, America's Abdication and the Fate of the World. He's in from France, where he is very well known uh, as a public intellectual and a philosopher to talk about the ideas in his book. I'll mention that he'll also be at the 92nd Street Y tonight in conversation in conversation with Simon Shama. So that's tonight at the 92nd Street Y. Um, Bernard, not all French people feel the way you do about the United States, as I said before the break. In fact, you say the far left and the far right in France both see the United States as the embodiment of evil, <clears throat> not Russia. Do the French left and right think America is evil today for different reasons? Yeah, th- this is the, the common ground, one of the common grounds between extreme left and extreme right in France. They hate America, not Trump. They hate America itself. They hate the values of America. They hate the melting pot of America. They hate the fact that in America you have people of so many origin living together, respecting each other. They hate American liberalism. And this is one of the main component, uh, this is one of the theses of the book, of this dark side of Europe. A philosopher like Heidegger in the 30s, who was, as you know, a great philosopher, but also one of the master thinker, if not the one, of Adolf Hitler. He said that the embodiment of evil was America, because America was a, was a, a, a country based on an idea on a creed, on some values, and not on a race, a pure race, a blood, a soil, and so on. Heidegger was so frightened by this image of Americans moving on and moving on from a house to another one, even in the conquest of the, uh, of the West. So this image of America, uh, of a, a, a perpetual voyage, a, a, a traveling country, is exactly what the fascists in Europe, fascists of the left, fascists of the right, fascists like Jeremy Corbyn, or fascists like uh, uh, Steve Bannon, who is now nearly a French, because he's helping Steve Bannon. You know that he is a main supporter of Marine Le Pen. That makes sense. Uh, it but, makes sense. But, yeah. uh, they hate putting, America. Uh, I, I could hear some murmurs when you put Jeremy Corbyn on that list. I'm sorry, but Jeremy Corbyn is an anti-Semite, uh, clearly. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn is um, an anti-European. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn wants to go from Great Britain to Little England. Jeremy Corbyn uh, thinks that there is too many 
migrants and too many foreigners in England who are stealing the jobs of the true English. Jeremy Corbyn <laughs> pretends to be a leftist. He's a reactionary. I'm sorry to say it, but it's true. And I'm sometimes afraid. Jeremy Corbyn is more than Jeremy Corbyn. He is a paradigm. You might have also in America, be careful, a Jeremy Corbynization um, of your left. Of the Democratic Party. Of the Democratic Party. And this would be the worst. The, one of the problems which I see in, in America today, and I say that again with humility, sorrow, and love, because this is my second country. As I always say, as my parents taught me when I was a boy, I would not exist without America, because my family would have been exterminated in the camps. For me, in America, what is sad is that you have the worst right you ever had. This is Trump. And you sometimes have the worst left that you could, uh, that you had also, because you have also a radicalization of the left, which would not be good. Do you the want to name names? I I want to be uh, I want to be polite and uh, no and and they are not my main enemies of course because I'm I belong to this family so I will not I will not put names they are not here to reply to me but you know to whom I mean I'm ready for a, a, a frank debate man to man or man to woman directly frankly I'm ready to that. Let's take a question from here in the green space. I think over here on this side. Hi. Hi. Bonjour. Bienvenue. Hello. Welcome. Um, my name is Mark. My last name is Shalom. I was born in Alexandria, Egypt. We lived in Greece, France, and now we're very happy in the United States. My question to you is, um, there has been a change in the economic status in the United States, in France, in many parts of the Western world, in England, which is causing people to have fear of the other, which is causing people like Corbyn and others, and I hate to say our president, who appeals to the fear and the greed, if you will, of those who think that we should rebel against those who have or work hard, and it creates great problems. So how much of this is a result of socioeconomic downward trends in these various countries, and how do you propose to change this trend? Be my guest tonight at the 92nd country. No, seriously, be my personal guest call them, tell them you are my guest, I will reply to this precise question. In a few words, I think that the economic explanation is too short. It is always too short. You know, when uh, in the 30s, you had people who said that the Nazism was due to economic crisis. They, we know now, now, historians know that they missed the main point. Today, the real battle is not this one. It's a battle on ideas. You have a real crisis of democracy. You have a real crisis of on liberal principle. You have a liberal, uh, a, a, a real hate on liberal values, a hatred of liberal values, who is like a tide. But wait, is, if we had did not have a decades-long hollowing out of the middle class, would we be having this conversation? I think so. I think so. We are living the third crisis of this sort. We had one at the end of the 19th century. We had one in the 30s, and we have one now. And we have this crisis because, as my, my, my friend Bob Kagan says, the natural state of humanity is not liber liberal values, is not sophisticated democracy. It is jungle jungle. This is a natural state. And from time to time, because of a great leadership, because of, uh, of um, uh, uh, sophistication of ideas, because people are, have a greatness in, embedded in themselves, you have a blooming of democracy. But often you fall again into the jungle. And we are in a moment now when we fall again in the jungle. So what is really uh, uh, in cause? You are, there is intimate, there is a, um, a domestic reasons, but you have also reasons coming from outside. Europe, for example, is um, 
has enemies very strong. The, the five I quote in my book, Putin, uh, Erdogan, and so on, they are working hard to weaken Europe, to discourage Europe, to finance and to help the extreme rightist parties. I said that about Steve, Steve Bannon before. Yes. Do you know that you're Steve Bannon? You got rid of him. But where is he? <laughs> Steve Bannon now is in France. He's in Italy. He's yeah. in Spain. Yeah. He's campaigning in order to yes. promote all these fascist parties which we have in Europe. This has nothing to do with the economical crisis. This has to do with an orchestrated campaign coming from Steve Bannon and others. Steve Bannon is nothing, of course. It's okay. As, we, as uh, Donald Trump is not so much. Yes. You know, they are just epiphenomenons. Epiphenomenons. And my belief, by the way, is that in America, you are, we are too obsessed maybe by uh, Donald Trump. Uh, I, I see the press every morning. I'm so depressed. Depressed by the press. Donald Trump, the last tweet... What I read this morning about Elizabeth Warren, which is, by the, by the way, disgusting. The, the fact of speaking, uh, w uh, see you in the trail, as he said yesterday. Everybody in America knows that when he says that, he means the, tear, the, the, the trail of tears, which means the deportation of the native Americans in the north of Oklahoma. It is disgusting, but... We have to get to you think try. He, you think he knows about that? I'm sorry? You think he knows about that? <laughs> knows about the Trail of Tears? He, he, he probably knows, yes. Yeah. I'm sure he knows. He's, not, he's obsessed by uh, Jackson, as you know. Uh, he's Andrew the only Jackson. one. Uh -huh. He's the only one he knows. He, he knows little about um, American history. He knows less than myself, and I don't know a lot. But he knows President Jackson. He knows the Trail of Tears. Uh, yes. Uh, but... We have to oblige ourselves to, to break the spell uh, of, of Donald Trump. The real stage, the real picture is so much bigger. We are facing a world with big uh, players. Uh, the, big, the players I, 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 I speak in my book, Putin, uh, Erdogan, and the others. So in well, front of that, poor baby Trump. He's, he's an epiphenomenon. Let's take, and you can all go look up epiphenomenon after the show. <laughs> and let's take a phone call, line eight, Marsha in Brooklyn. You're on WNYC with Bernard Henri Levy. Hello, Marsha. No, Marsha? Uh, now day. we got you. There we go. I think she was on hold, so she put it on the speakerphone, went to do some things. You can She's be here. excused for doing this. <laughs> Hi, Marsha. Hi. Go ahead. Oh, my question for you, Mr. Levy, is the conversation between the left, the right, and the middle in the United States around the conflicts in the Middle East, and particularly Israel and Palestine, if you feel they inhabit the same problematic space you already described, or if you think there are other elements that are part of that difficult conversation. No, it, it is not the same. Uh, uh, it is not the same uh, story, uh, Israel. Even if I disagree with a lot of aspects of the current policy of the government of Israel, is a great democracy. Still, more than ever, more than ever, and Mr. Netanyahu might see it very soon. More than is, ever. Yes, because the fact. Uh, that Israel has a prime minister who is under such a scrutiny, who is under such uh, a threat, a personal threat of, of uh, justice, proves that, that more than ever, Israel is a vibrant, uh, living, uh, uh, based on principles, democracy. Yes, of course. E even as the population trends toward uh, more theocratic leanings? I don't see that. I don't see that in the population. Uh, I, uh, I, I, there is in the population, like in any democratic country, a struggle of ideas between nationalist and uh, not nationalist. There is a populist trend in Israel, as we have in ev everywhere, but it is not the main trend and the mainstream. Still not. No, no, I don't think so. And you will see. You will see the next... Uh, um, rendezvous of the Israeli democracy. No. So 
I don't think that um, Israel belongs to this uh, picture, and I still believe that in front of uh, the five kings, in front of their uh, cruel and, 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 and crude attack on democracy and liberal values, Israel stands firm and is a good ally of the West on the good side of the barricade. Although um, Israel has been portrayed now as, at least under the current prime minister, as making some common cause with those on your list of five kings who it's convenient for them to do so. I mean, Soviet Russia was a murderous enemy of the Jewish people. Now we have this emerging coalition of Trump, Putin, Netanyahu, and MBS, all with nationalistic and tell me if you disagree, authoritarian tendencies uh, to different degrees, do we not? You are right, and I don't, I don't like that. When I mentioned to you one minute before that there are some aspects in the current policy of the current government, I dislike this is what I think. And I believe that sometimes the Israeli government should be better inspired if, she, if he could separate the necessary political compromises necessary for any state, including a weak and threatened state like Israel, and the moral excess of embracement. Excess of embrace. You may make an alliance with, let's say, Donald Trump and not embrace him in such a kissing way, in such a, 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 a cuddling way. Netanyahu does too much. He is not obliged. He can he can take what he has to take from the alliance. This is regular political game. But if he compromises the Jewish wisdom, the Jewish wall of words of the invisible citadel of Judaism, with if he compromises that with the nihilism, the kitsch, and the cynicism, which is embodied by the five, five kings plus Trump, he loses part of his mind. This is what I believe. And there we have to leave it because I have to go. I mean, Trump's been called many things, but now I'm going to have to go look up Epiphenomenon. <laughs> Epiphenomenon, baby Trump, too. You may <laughs> think about that baby I've Trump. Heard before, and and yeah. I invite, please, I invite the whole I, I, I like this crowd. <laughs> please, 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 come to the 90 Second Street. Why? Just, I invent now a code. Say that you come from Brian Lehrer BHL. This is the code Brian Lehrer BHL. Call the Y and you will have a discount on the tickets. I promise. <laughs> Brian Lehrer, VHL. You have just driven the 92nd Street Y box office absolutely <laughs> mad as they have to enter a new code. BHL is Bernard Henri Levy. His new book is The Empire and the Five Kings America's Abdication and the Fate of the World. And that 92Y event tonight is in conversation with Simon Shama. Thank you so much for coming. Thank to you, the Brian. Space. Thank you.